This is a video taking you through the work solutions for a practice task for the internal on uh, level one linear algebra. This also goes by the number 1.4 or achievement standard 91029 on the New Zealand NCA curriculum. This is the information we're being given on this practice task, which is all about laying some carpet and working out some options. So we've got um, quotes from four companies that can do some carpet laying for Sam and Tony that are looking at the options that they have. So we have Carpet NZ, which gives the quote in the form of an equation. So let's just take a minute to have a look at that. So Carpet NZ, they've got this equation where C equals 40M plus 500. Now C is the cost in dollars and M is the number of square meters of carpet that you need to buy. And they will give us this quote up to a maximum of 200 meters squared. So whatever the area is, that will go in for M, so that's the area of carpet we need, and it will output the cost in C. Now Easy Floor is another company. They have no fitting charge, and they charge $60 per meter squared. Flooring NZ will come to in a minute. We'll have a look at the graph uh, that they supply for their quote. And then we have Cover It, which is $2,500 uh, set fee for up to 50 meters squared. Then if we're going from 50 to 150 meters squared, it will cost us $4,500. And if we are going from 150 up to 200 meters squared, it will cost us $6,500. This is the graph that Flooring NZ have supplied, where we've got cost on the y-axis and area on the x-axis. So we can read off, if we want a particular area of carpeting done, then we can use that line to work out how much it will cost us. And now onto the task. They're considering these three projects, carpeting their house, their sleep out, and their garage, and we're given the area of each one. The task is to represent the information from each of the four companies using the same representations. This means we'll be able to make some comparisons then recommend which company they should use for each of the carpeting situations that we have, then discuss which of the companies is best to use for different ranges of flooring areas, and then see if we can adjust Carpet New Zealand's quote to make them the cheapest for any area that we would want to do. We need to describe two different ways of doing that and how we could realistically change their quote to achieve that goal. Um, we'll show that on the graph and give suitable equations. So let's start with representing these different quotes with the same representations. So we have Carpet NZ that has given us an equation. Now we want to see if we can make an equation for each of the other ones. So let's just take a look at Carpet NZ's quote. This cost is going to be equal to the area times 40 and then add on 50. So it's a, uh, sorry, 500. It'd be a set charge of 500 plus 40 meters, $40 for every meter squared that of carpet that gets used. Now, Easy Floor, if we look at that in a similar way, they don't have any set charge at the beginning, so no fitting charge, but it will cost $60 for every meter squared. So the cost will be 60 times every meter being used. So M represents the number of square meters just like it did um, on the other equation. Now, what we've done there is form an equation. This here gives us the first skill that we need to show on this paper is being able to take some information and form an equation. The next skill we're going to get by looking at flooring NZ's uh, graph and see if we can make an equation from that. If we can do that, that's another skill towards being able to um, pass this internal. So if we take a look at flooring NZ's line, it goes through the y-axis at 1,000. So it has a y-intercept of 1,000. Then we need the gradient. So the gradient is rise over run. So if we take a little section of that line, then we can work out rise over run. So we've gone up by 2,000. We've gone along by 50. And 2,000 divided by 50 gives us a gradient of 40. Now we put that into 
the equation for a straight line graph of y equals mx plus c, except we're using c as being on our y-axis. So c is equal to 40 times our x-axis, which in this case is m, so the gradient times m, and then add on the y-intercept of 1000. And this means we have now been able to form an equation from its graph. Now, before we get to cover its quote, we're going to take those two equations that we've got um, from Carpet NZ and Easy Floor and put them onto the graph so we can compare them with Flooring NZ in the same um, pictural way. So let's start with Easy Floor. So we have C equals 60M. That means it's got no Y intercept. Um, so it's going to go through the Y axis at zero and it's got a gradient of 60. So every time you go across one, you go up by 60. So you can either plot it by going across one and up 60, across another one and up 60, or you can put some values in. So we can also work out what the value would be for an area of 50, say. So if we did 50 times 60, so an area of 50 going in for the M value in our equation, um, and we times that by 60, then that will be 3,000. So an area of 50 will cost us $3,000. We can do the same for 100. An area of 100 times it by 60 is going to give us a cost of $6,000. An area of 150 will give us a cost of 150 times 60, which is $9,000. And we can start to plot these points and join them up with a straight line which you, of course, will use your ruler for and not have to do it freehand like I have to do right now. OK, let's move on to flooring NZ. I'll just label this one as being easy floor. So I mean, carpet NZ is next. So we've got this equation for carpet NZ being that um, we have a Y intercept of 500 and a gradient of 40. So we'll start the line at 500, where it crosses the y-axis. It's going to go up in 40s, or we can work out some values. So I'm going to substitute 50 into my equation. Our equation, remember, was that C equals 40M plus 500. So if we do um, 50 times 40 and add 500, then we will get 2,500. So at 50, we can plot 2,500. Now, what we've done there is actually another skill. This right here in the purple is substitution. And if you show that working out, then you get another point towards the skills that you need to show for this standard. So we are showing that we can substitute into a formula. I'll do it one more time. And just remember, when you're doing this, you wouldn't be writing all over the graph. You'll do this on your um, paper to show all you're working out. So for the, the area of 100, the cost will be 40 times 100 plus 500, which will be $4,500. OK, so now at 100, we can plot 4,500 like this. And we'll carry on making those points to be able to create the line for carpet NZ. And we'll get this line. Now, do note that on carpet NZ, um, they only go up to a maximum of 200 meters squared. So I've made sure that my line stops at the 200 meters mark and it doesn't go any further. Finally, we're going to put the costings for cover it onto the graph. Now, this one is um, a step graph or a piecewise graph because it's got different things happening at different stages. So we have $2,500 up to and including 50 meters squared. So that's just a flat fee of $2,500 for any amount that is between 0 and 50. Now we do need to include the top and bottom end of that. The top end will be included on this line so it gets a filled in circle. The bottom end also included there although it's not really a realistic thing to say. So we wouldn't actually include the zero just there. So we give it an empty circle. So um, on the zero side of things, we've got an empty circle around 2,500 because if you were doing zero carpeting, it would not cost you $2,500. So that does not get included. Then we move on to it being 4,500 up to and including 150. 
So 150 meters will cost us 4,500 and it's up to and including 150 meters. So that gets a filled in circle. Now that starts from the 50 meters um, also being 4,500, but not included, because if we were going to get 50 meters of carpeting, that would be included in the first step. So we give it an open circle um, for 4,500 at 50. Then our next step is 6,500 for the next group of um, area, which is up to and including 200 meters. So at 200 meters, it's going to cost us 6,500 up to and including 200 meters, starting at the 150, but again, the 150 does not get included in the 6,500 line, so it gets an empty circle. Because if we were going to do 150 meters exactly, that would be included in the step below, just here where we've got the filled in circle. Now we need to go back and take a look at what else we've been asked to have a think about. So from our task, we have done representing the information for each of the four companies using the same representations. We've used formally and we've also done it graphically. Next, we need to recommend which company we want to use for each of these events up here. All right, so let's start off with number one, the house. Now we've got an area of 220 meters squared. We want to work out what our best quote is going to be. So on our graph and using a ruler, we will um, go to 220 and you'll have some squared paper you're doing this on. So you can do it a little bit more accurately and use a ruler to go straight up and see where we are going to hit the first line. So our first line is right there on flooring NZ. They're going to give us the lowest quote. OK, so we're telling them that they should use flooring NZ for the house because they are the cheapest and you can read off of the graph what the cheapest is going to be. And you're showing yet another skill that you need for this internal of being able to read off the graph. So it will cost nine thousand eight hundred. So to show that skill of reading a value from a straight line graph, you need to draw your dotted lines onto the graph. Then we'll take a look at the options for the sleep out, which is 35 meters squared. So we, again, we can read off at 35 meters squared and the lowest option there is for carpet NZ. And if you're not sure exactly what that comes to, you can use the formula to work out um, if you're not sure if it doesn't land nicely on a line. So the formula for this one was um, the cost was 40 m plus 100 so that's 40 times 35 plus 100 sorry my mistake it wasn't plus 100 it was plus 500 which makes it 1900 dollars and finally the garage at 25 meters squared if we take a look at where that is, it's actually where these two points, these two lines cross for easy floor and carpet NZ. So we can tell them to use either one. So we can show that both of those cost 1,500. And just to secure my marks for showing substitution, I've also shown the calculation of those using the formula. So I can just make sure that I've covered off those skills. OK, next we will discuss which of the companies is best to use for at least three different ranges of flooring areas. So if we take a look at our graph, we can see where those ranges should be split up. So it's when things change. So our first change happens here at 25 meters. And then the next time we get lines cross over is at 100 meters. 100 meters squared, that is, and then cover it stays the cheapest until the end. So now we can summarize that in um, writing. And then finally, anything more than 200 meters squared, some of our companies don't do. It's only flooring NZ and easy floor that do. And you can clearly see that flooring NZ is below the line for easy floor after 200 meters squared. 
Now, there are just a couple of points that you would want to um, add to this to strengthen your answer, which is where some of the things would cost the same. So that happens at 25 metres squared, where easy floor and carpet NZ are the same. And at 50 and 100 metres squared, cover it and carpet NZ cost the same. And finally, Carpet NZ decide to change their quote to be the cheapest company for any flooring area. Describe at least two different ways that they could realistically change their quote. So they still need to be a business that's making money to achieve this goal. Show this on the graph and give suitable equations. Include at least two specific examples of the cost they would charge for each different areas of carpet. Now, we're not going to give a fully worked solution for this, but I'm going to give you the ideas of how to go about it. So we need to undercut everybody on that graph for carpet NZ. So we can't have any places where they will be the same like we saw happening at um, 25 and 50 and 100. We need them to be the cheapest every single time. So we could reduce their quote to make it undercut the um, blue line, which was for easy flooring. Now, easy flooring had um, an equation that was um, where the cost is equal to 60M. So if we change that slightly and made it cost was equal to 50M, then we would know we would always undercut them up to um, 25 meters squared. So we could put that onto the graph. So it would start off looking like this. Now, next, we could keep them doing the same as what they were doing before, just slightly lower. So after 25 meters squared and up to uh, 100 meters squared inclusive. We want to go just below the, their original quote um, so that we know that they will always undercut cover it. So, for example, we could change it to be C, the cost is equal to 40 times the area in meters squared plus 400 instead of the original 500 that it was. So we'll have the same gradient, but we'll go ever so slightly under the line that we had before. It'll look like this with the open circle at the beginning, closed circle at the end. And I'm keeping it as close to the other lines as possible so we can make the most money whilst being cheaper than all the rest. Then our next stage, we're going to go from 100 to 150 with a flat rate of 4,400. And we'll pop that onto the graph here. And then after that, we can go back to um, going on a gradient to keep undercutting that cover it. And to achieve that, the equation would need to be that the cost is equal to 40M minus 1,600 to create that line. And we're just going to label this as the new pricing structure. And that was one way that Carpet NZ could achieve this goal. We need to go through and describe two different ways or rather you do and then also go on and include at least two specific examples of the cost that they would charge for different areas so you would go back and say if i was going to order carpet for 100 meters squared or 150 meters squared and work out the costs of those things i'm not going to do that i think i've shown you enough skills now that you should be able to finish that off yourself you can come up with an alternative pricing structure perhaps a more straight line one, uh, one that doesn't have the kinks in it, but still undercuts everybody else. Finally, we'll just look at the criteria for achieved merit and excellence. For achieved, you can form an equation, draw a graph from an equation, show correct substitution into a formula and, and interpret points of intersection from the graph. For merit, you then need to go on and do some uh, logical process in context of the problem. So for this one, it was find the ranges when the different companies are the cheapest and make clear recommendations with good communication about when you should use each company, for which different areas. For that one, you have to show the upper and lower limits on each of those ranges. For excellence, you need to create a new and improved model with an accompanying equation, which is correct, graph it correctly, and give some examples of prices that you would find on the new pricing model for the different areas that you could use. All right, good luck with your internal.